Good morning. Welcome to today's lesson. It's a wonderful lesson today. I really uh, am excited about it. Um, this is a lesson in Proverbs today. Okay, lesson in Proverbs. And so the overall topic for this lesson here is let us reason together. Let us reason together. Thus saith the Lord. Let us reason together. Okay, so this is lesson number nine. Lesson number nine in, in the book of Proverbs. Okay, we're going to say a quick word of prayer. Um, we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 4, verses 23 through 27. And then we're going to, uh, to get started. Okay, all right. So let's join in together in prayer. Dear Lord, we praise Thee, O God, and we thank Thee for all that You provide us in Your Word, Lord. We thank You for Your Word uh, and the beauty of it and what it all provides us and the fact that You just state very simply, let us reason together. Let's go to Your Word and let us think and, and read and understand, O Lord, and what You provided to this earth, Lord. The people of this earth don't quite understand what they're missing. Um, in reference to your word. Oh Lord, please give us the strength, the wisdom, the knowledge we need to teach this lesson and open your word to us that we may understand and we may see it and recognize it and believe it, Lord, for all that it says. And we love thee, O oh Lord Jesus, and in your name, amen. <clears throat> all right, let's read Proverbs chapter 4, verses 23 through 27. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips. Put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on. Let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. All right, so clear words here. So let me ask you a question today. Have you ever considered why God gave Solomon the desire to write these words of Proverbs? Very interesting thought. Why did God give Pro, uh, Solomon the desire to write these words of wisdom? Why? Okay. The words of Proverbs will make you think. It will absolutely make you think. You look at words of Proverbs, it's like 31 chapters, 30, 31 chapters. Okay. You can read a chapter each day for each day of the month, okay? Interesting, all right? So it makes you think. It makes you think. It makes you consider your ways, all right? God wants you to consider your path of travel. He wants you to consider it, okay? All right? He wants you to consider your activities and your ways throughout your day. He wants you to consider how you live your life, okay? He wants you to consider because other people watch you, all right? God gave you this wonderful ability to think and then reason in your head about things, all right? God wants you to reason with him. He actually asked you that question in the book of Isaiah. Please reason with me, all right? Let's reason together, okay? He wants you to read his word. Because his word that he's given you that we have in front of us today is a love letter to you. It's a love letter to you about life, about why you were created, about why all things exist, okay? He wants to reason on what he says to you in the Bible. He wants you to reason with him, okay? He wants you to think about it and ponder it, okay? In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, Solomon states, keep thy heart with all diligence. So the question then arises, why should we keep our heart with all diligence? And so it explains it. For out of it are the issues of life, okay? All the issues of life come out of your heart, come out, comes out of the processes of how you think. Well, what are the issues of life? What are they, okay? Well, you consider back when you were a teenager, okay? All the things you thought about, all the things you desired, all the things that you wanted to do, the issues of life, okay? Con consider yourself and what are your thoughts? So consider yourself today. What are your thoughts, okay? As you grew up, as you met your spouse, okay? As you developed, as you processed things, the path you took to, to provide for your family or to, to take care of your family, either or, okay? Well, what path did you go down, okay? Did you even consider it? Or do you said, well, I'm just going to, 
uh, entrap this other person so they can be attached to me for the rest of my life and I can live as how I want to. No, 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 that's not the way. You're supposed to love, care, provide, okay? All right, have you ever thought about, uh, you know, other people who deal with things, maybe who get abused in life and all the difficulties they have in their thoughts, okay? And as they reason why they're alive, okay? You ever thought about the, the average person as they try and develop in their lives, as they go to college and develop and learn, you know? Have you considered those people? Have you considered the person that really goes awry, you know, down the path of alcohol and drugs, you know? Have you considered the soldier who's in combat a lot? How his thoughts of war and, and killing uh, just disturb him greatly later on in life, okay? How um, maybe you're attacked, maybe you're, uh, you lose a body part, I, I don't know, okay? Uh, all those things, the issues of life affect you, okay? Your, your life, uh, your uh, happy times, your bad times, uh, deaths in the family, your eventual death, okay? How do you consider your life? How do you walk? The issues of life. What does this mean for you? The issues of life, okay? All right, so um, here's the thought. If we store up good things in our hearts, then our words and actions will be good, okay? You consider um, the balance of life in a soldier who actually has to go to war, okay? And he's in, in, in a, a period of strife and war, killing and violence for a full year, okay? How is his balance of life affected if all he has seen is, is horror, okay, for a full year every day, how's that balance of life effective, okay? All right, so um, when you consider a person who's in drugs and alcohol constantly, how's their balance of life affected? Do they even know the good, okay? Can they even understand? How is a person that's affected by pornography uh, or by the horrors of things that people do to each other in this world, okay? How, how does that weight out with the balance of the good things in your life, like birthdays, marriages, the joys of family, uh, the joys of vacations, the joys of being together, the joys of being around God's Word each day? How's the balance of life affected? Think, think about this. Consider it. It's a really fascinating subject, okay? All right. And then you wonder why people do evil things. You wonder why people do such good things, okay, in the world, all right? So, in the, at the beginning of chapter 4, um, there are doctrines of the Bible. So, the beginning of chapter 4 of Proverbs, okay, um, uh, the command to obtain wisdom at the very beginning of chapter 4, hear ye children, the instruction of the Father, and attend to no understanding, okay? Then it goes into, for I give you good doctrine, forsake you not my law, okay? That's the law of God, all right? So, at the beginning of chapter 4, okay, you have the doctrines of the Bible that we should follow, that we need to take hold of the instruction, let her not go, these are some of the words that are there, keep her for she is thy life, okay? All right, then we, um, then we bro break down, broke down the warnings on the doctrines of sin, you know, last week, okay? All right, so in verses 20 through 22, it says, implore you to attend. Okay, to intend, to incline your ear, to listen, to pay close attention to, 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 so you really dig into and you begin to ponder it and think in the synaptic functions of your mind. All right? So when we follow God's word, his precepts, which are the doctrines of the Bible, we store up good things in our heart, okay? Okay, we store up those good things in our heart so we don't sin, and we don't have to deal with the fruits of sin, okay? Like I, last week, I talked about the harmatology, okay? The horrific nature of sin and what it is, okay? In Matthew chapter 12, verses 34 through 35, Jesus clearly points out this subject um, out of the, uh, to the Pharisees and Sadducees. He points out the subject. He said, you know, when you, he said, he says, oh, generation of vipers, okay, he calls them vipers, he says, you are just snakes, okay, oh, generation of vipers, how can you, ye being evil, speak good things, okay, they were so focused on um, the, the evil in their lives and, and how to take from others that they couldn't speak any good at all, there was no good coming out of them, it was all evil, okay, they were conspiring constantly how to destroy Jesus, they were 
always trying to contradict Jesus. They want to put him down, okay, contradict his words. They want to trip him up. They were trying to figure out a new way to trip him up in his speech. Uh, they always were trying to figure out how to take advantage of the poor, how to take the widow's house and land that was there. They want to take it away from the widow, okay? They were always trying to figure out how to add more burdens on society to make more money off the society of that day, how to get to the next level of their religious society and, and step on other people and, and put other people down. And on and on and on. They were full of deceit, okay? There was absolutely no good in them because they were so full of legalism and sin. They were they were only to think of deceit. They could only think of wicked thoughts, okay? They could only think about how they could destroy others. They could only uh, have evil desires in their heart. They had no good in them, okay? So as Jesus said, oh, generation of vipers. I mean, from the beginning, their whole line was just full of snakes, okay? Okay. Um, how can ye, being evil, speak of things? They couldn't, okay? Then he goes on to say, For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So we consider that verse back here. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Jesus says, For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man, out of the good treasure of the heart, bringeth forth good things to others, because he gives, he loves. He tries to treat people with respect, honor, and dignity, okay? So, um, and, and on the evil man, okay, out of the evil treasure, bringing forth evil things. You think about all the evil in this world. We see it consistently. I mean, you, you look at the evils that are going on right now over in the Middle East. It's just horrific, okay, horrific. And you think, how could people do that? Well, they did it, okay, because of the evil that's in them, okay? They can't bring out good things. So these statements of Jesus are so true. I'm sure, I'm sure that all of us, all of us, that, that consider these things that maybe you're listening today, um, seen, have seen the angry person, okay? They've seen the crooked politician. They've seen the evil person that kills and destroys lives of others. Time and time again, we see it around the world, in our nation, countries that go into other countries, you know, and just kill, maim, and torture. It's just horrible, okay? All right? Um, the pornographer that, you know, that, that sells pornography online, that uh, traps, you know, young people into pornography and a life of filth, you know, when they trap them there, when they can't get out of it. It's just horrific, okay? All right? Uh, the distortion of biological sex and how we were made, you know, male and female, this distortion is today. Um, the distortions of, of God's church, Jesus Christ's church, distortion of his church, around the world. It's just horrible, okay? Um, the, the distortion of biblical doctrines and the putrid background of people distorting that. It's just horrific there, okay? You look at the distortion of the Bible and just all the different types of just Bibles out there. It's just people they read don't even know what they're reading anymore, okay? It's horrible, okay? Um, and, and you look at um, uh, the distortion of, of God's word, uh, his love, okay? The distortions of love. I mean, people think of love today as sex. It's not. It's love. It's totally different from sex, okay? The distortion of God's love, agape love, okay? The distortion of salvation, where people tell you you got to work works to get to salvation. No. Salvation only comes through one person. That's Jesus Christ, okay? He's the way, the truth, and the life. Distortion, Okay? How do we decide what's right, okay? How do we decide what's wrong, okay? And we don't even know ourselves anymore, okay? Because we've gotten so distorted, okay? God is not the author of confusion, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, clearly stated here. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, okay? As in all the churches of the saints, he wants peace. He wants compassion. He wants love. He wants care for others. He don't want all this other horrible stuff, okay? It's, it's horrific, okay? So, now this word here, God's not the author of confusion. This word confusion comes from the Greek word for tumult or tumult or unquietness. I mean, you look at our society right now. Um, you look at the church. You look at all the belief systems out there. It's horrific, okay? Um, so much confusion, so much 
distortion, so much tumult, so much just horrific unquietness where people just want to destroy the lives of others. Okay? We are to keep our hearts with all diligence, folks, for out of it are the issues of life. How do we keep our hearts with all diligence? Focused on God's Word, the Word of God. Okay? And I firmly believe the King James Version. I firmly believe that. Okay? All right? Because when you start to stray in all the other different Bibles out there, you get some confusion going on, okay? And you start saying to yourself, well, what's right? What's wrong? And then you pick up a word that might say it's the Word of God, and you won't even know it's the Word of God, okay? So you're like, well, where is the answer? Who decides what's right? Who decides what's wrong? Okay? So confusion, okay? So we need to keep our heart with all diligence because out of it are the issues of life, okay? This is difficult, okay? The tumult that's right now that's out there, the unquietness that's out, out there in the world today, the horror, it's terrible. Such confusion we see, okay? So much confusion. Psalm 119 verses 9 through 11 states this, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? So how does a young person grow up in this world with all the tumult, all the confusion, all the horror, okay? Well, there's only one way. It states, by taking heed thereto according to thy word, to God's word, okay? All right, to God's word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Pretty clear, okay? Pretty clear. The keeping of God's word in your heart will keep you from sin. The keeping of your heart with all diligence. This helps keep confusion at a distance, okay? It helps you stay focused. It helps you know what's right and what is wrong, okay? So we need to watch our speech today. The speech of today is absolutely horrific. It is unbelievable the things that are going on out of pulpits today. It amazes me when I listen to brother, uh, listen to other preachers, okay? So, so speech, we need to watch your speech. Verse 24 says, put away from thee forward speech, and perverse lips put far from thee. So you ever hear someone cursing? It's horrific. It bothers me, okay? Using a lot of profanity, okay? When you hear it, you actually want to just cover your ears. I, I do all the time. I'm like, man, why is this guy got to be speaking like this? You know? And, and when you see and hear a person like that, you absolutely don't desire to be near them. You want to be, you just want to leave them and be away from them. Okay? You want to keep them at a distance. Okay? You absolutely do. Lying, deceit, filthy, and vain language are all so commonplace today. In all offices, no matter where you're at, you hear these words, okay? Jesus told the Pharisees in Matthew 12, verses 36 through 37, But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Okay? A lot of people, they're going to say, well, oh, yeah. God's going to let me into heaven because I'm a, I'm a good good person. I know that. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to get into heaven that way. There's only one way. It's through Jesus Christ. Okay? Yeah. The only way you get into heaven is through Jesus Christ. Okay? And God says at the great white throne of judgment, that he's going to judge everyone by what they've done. Okay? He's going to judge them. Okay? You're not going to get into heaven by thinking you have done rightly because you've done wrongly. You're full of sin. Okay? There's only one way to get into heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you that right now, okay? You'll be judged by what you've said, okay? All the things you've said, okay? All right, so all people will be, will have to answer one day for what the things they've done in their flesh. They'll have to answer one day, okay? All people will be judged by what their speech. For me, when I think of the judgment, the coming judgment, I am very, very happy to be judged by Jesus before the beam of seat of Christ because I know that he is in my life, okay? Rather than the great right throne of judgment where people are going to be condemned to hell because okay? they thought they were good enough to get into heaven, all right? Though all the idle words you said, okay, by their words, they will be condemned, okay? Pretty clear. 
Paul states in Ephesians chapter 4, 29, he states this, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister unto the hearers, okay? No corrupt communication, that it may minister unto the hearers, the people that hear you. Because people watch you, folks. They do. They watch you, okay? In Philippians 4, 8, it says to think on these things, okay? To think on these things. And what things is that word ought to think on? Paul states this, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things that are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things, okay? And that's what Paul says, okay? Uh, so that's what we're supposed to focus on in our thoughts, our reasoning, okay? The thinking of God, all right? So Christian, a Christian speech is tempered with love and patience. We are to lift others up, not tear them down, all right? So once a person finds Jesus Christ, confesses your sin, and is saved, okay? And then you've got the sealing of the Holy Spirit where Christ has sealed you with the Holy Spirit. The person changes, which includes your speech, your ways, your activities, your actions. So a Christian not only stops saying filthy, perverse, forward statements, but the speech of Christian now builds and helps others, okay? It builds up, it helps others. It becomes virtuous speech, all right? So put good things in your mind. Put the words of God in your mind, the Bible, okay? Think on these things. This is why Solomon states to put away the forward mouth, the perverse lips, put away evil, the thoughts of evil, how to get even with others. Put all that away. Get rid of it because it doesn't matter, right? So put it away. Here's some thoughts from uh, Dr. Ironside. He states, just as the heart is the center of the physical system, whence flows the issues of life. So in a moral and spiritual sense, the heart is, used as a synonym for the soul, is that which must be jealously guarded. Okay, we must guard it. That growth for maturity may go forth, which is the upbuilding of the child of God. It's the growth, okay? All right. As it is out of the heart's abundance that the reasoning or the thinking of the child of God as it is, no, I'm sorry, sorry, I, I messed up there. As it is out of the heart's abundance, okay, all right, um, the thinking or reasoning, the mouth speaks, the mouth and heart are here intimately connected. A forward mouth and perverse lips show forth a person who is not in subjection to God. So when you hear that individual out there speaking all the profanity, they're not in subjection to God. They don't care about God. They have no desire to be around God, okay? All right? The person who has God's word in their heart, mind, and soul will manifest that word on their lips. This is why God says, reason with me, okay? Reason with God. He wants you to reason with him over his words. He wants you to get into and read this Bible, okay? So Solomon now goes on. So let's get back into Proverbs. Solomon now goes on into what his son should always do. So let me say, uh, this is what the Christian should always do. Reason with God every morning, every day. Consider his words, okay? Consider your path, okay? Folks, don't ever stop reasoning with God. Do it every day, every minute of every hour in the day. You need him to reason with you, okay? All right, don't stop, okay? Don't stop worshiping God. Think on these things, okay? Reason with God as he asks us to. Okay, please, all right? Proverbs 4, verse 25 states, let thine eyes look right on, okay? Let thine eyelids look straight before thee, okay? This is kind of some old wisdom here. This is what you do, sort of like taking God's word and using it as a covering for your eyes. This is sort of like using a mule or a horse to plow with, okay? I'm not sure anyone plows this way today, but what you would do is you would put blinders on the eyes of the animal like this so they couldn't see left or right. All they could see was forward. They could see the road forward, okay? So, so this was, they would look straight forward, and that's how you plow your road, straight forward, okay? All right, because of the blinders. You keep them uh, from looking side to side. Proverbs 4, verse 26 states, ponder the path of thy feet, okay? So here's the, the mule, blinders on his eyes, plodding forward, pondering the path of his feet, okay? 
ponder the path of thy feet, let all thy ways be established. So Proverbs 3, 6 states this, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. This is why God states in Isaiah 1, verse 18, he says, come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord, okay? So this is the word of God, folks, okay? He wants you to acknowledge him so he can direct the paths of your feet, okay? He's going to put blinders on you so that all the stuff in the world is not going to bother you, okay? You'll keep going forward, okay, like you're supposed to, all right? So God wants you to acknowledge him because he knows how difficult it is on this earth. God is very happy to help you in your daily walk if you will just acknowledge him, okay? He wants you to ponder your path in the light of his word. That's what he wants you to do, okay? Just as simple, okay? So Proverbs 5, verse 27, turn not to the right hand or to the left, remove thy foot from evil, just like the horse pulling a wagon, okay? Get, guess what, okay? So if you are following God's word, okay, you're pulling a wagon, okay? All right, so what's in the wagon? Guess what? Your dad, your mom, your grandpa, or grandma, you're pulling a wagon. Guess what that wagon is, okay? It's your whole family line that's in that wagon behind you, okay? You're pulling your, your kids, you're pulling their families, you're pulling your grandkids, your kids, pulling everyone behind you, your son-in-laws or, or, or daughter-in-laws, whoever may be behind you. You're pulling them, okay? They're watching you, okay? If you decide, okay, to no longer acknowledge God in your life and go your own way, guess what? Your family is going to follow you. They're going to go their own way, all right? So ponder the path of your feet, okay? Turn not to the right, nor to the left. Keep these blinders on your eyes, okay? Remove your foot from evil, okay? This is what's going on here. Philippians 4, 8, again, we've already read it once, about thinking about the pattern and pondering of our thoughts. He says to think on these things, these good things, okay? Okay? Whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just. Think on those things. You'll find all that stuff in God's word, okay? All right, so we have a way here to think on these things and not the things of the world. We are to think on the things of the Lord. Think on the things of our Father in heaven, who is the Ancient of Days, okay? He always has been and always will be, okay? He is God, all right? He desires for us to communicate with him. He desires for us to reason together over his word, okay? So let's do this, okay? That's what fellowship is, okay? We're reasoning over God's word about him and we're fellowshipping about it, all right? It's important, okay? So when the Lord was instructing Joshua, the Lord tells Joshua in Joshua 1 verse 7, only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. So folks, success in life is never guaranteed. I'm gonna tell you that right now. This world we live in is full of traps, is full of sinful people, is full of evil, okay? It's full of worries, it's full of catastrophes, all right? But God promises you inner peace, okay? Inner calm and the ability to face the realities in this world. So we trust in him, we acknowledge him, and he carries us through. He, he patterns the path of our feet. Our heart and our mouth will follow the will of God, okay, if we just stay focused on him and in his word. All right, I hope this is a good lesson for you today. Thank you for listening. Hope you have a good day. Bye.